Family Theater presents Barbara Rush and Wallace Ford. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Funny Valentine, starring Barbara Rush. And now, here is your host, Wallace Ford. Thank you, Tony Lofano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Funny Valentine, starring Barbara Rush as Kathy. I'm home. Hello, dear. Has Greg called yet? Oh, hi, Dad. Evening, honey. Not that I know of. Oh, my gosh, that means you'll be here on time. Want us to set an extra plate for him? Oh, no, it's a dinner dance. Oh, I thought I'd never get out of that beauty parlor. Is that you, Duchess? Yes, Junior. Don't get edgy. I just wanted to tell you that a small parcel arrived from Gregory the Great. Oh, where is it? Up in my room? I hid it. Dad. Come on, Les. Your sister's got a lot on her mind tonight. In the icebox. It's a beautiful corsage, Kathy. I peeked. Oh, Mom, will you help me dress? I'll never be ready. Of course. I just want to lift the vegetables. Les and I can do that, Dottie. No, I won't be a minute. Well, do you think the student prince will take the bait tonight? What? Gregory the Great. Oh, will you stop calling him that? He's a student, isn't he? A law student, and he works very hard. On his old man's money. And now Charlie, on the other hand... And what's Charlie got to do with this? I was just going to ask. Little brother, I've got some advice for you. Stay out of my love life. Oh, is that what you call it? And stop meddling in my personal affairs. Oh, yes, Duchess. Truly, Duchess. Lester, go and sit down. Your dinner's getting cold. Oh, I'm glad I'm just a child with no big problems. Come on, Kathy. It's almost 6.15. Oh, that kid. I unpacked your dress as soon as it came. It's just a dream. <laughs> it cost enough. Oh, gee... I hoped I'd have a little time for a nap. You sit down and rest for a minute. I'll get your things out. The blue sandals? Uh-huh. Your hair is lovely. Oh, thanks. It'll look better when I comb it out. Mom. Yes, dear? Why don't you like Greg? Why, I do like him, Kathy. I think he's a fine young man. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Come on, sit down at the dressing table. Well, Dad and Lester don't like him. Oh, they're just teasing. Oh, they are not they like Charlie. Charlie's their boy. Nice, practical Charlie. Here, swing your feet around. Well, I'd just like to know what's so great about Charlie. Well, they've known him a long time. You two were childhood sweethearts. Oh, we were childhood children, that's all. There was nothing sweetheart about it. I guess you just outgrew him. I certainly did. And I'm sure that when Dad and Lester get to know Greg a little better, they'll like him just fine. Oh, he never calls any more anyhow. Well, I imagine he feels it since you've taken up so steadily with Greg. A month ago. Four o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. That was the last time. What? To ask for a date for that evening. Three hours before he wants me to go out, he calls. Charlie? And I'm supposed to leap at the offer like I'd been mooning around the house all day just waiting for it. You better get started with the cleansing cream. Oh, he never has the, the slightest conception of how, how a girl likes to be treated with, with consideration and, and politeness. Like Greg? Well, he gets up when I come into a room and, and sends flowers, and, well, those things are very important. Do you think he's going to propose to you tonight? Well, I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Will you accept? Well, I can't think of a reason why I shouldn't. Say, what are these letters? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Valentine's. They came this morning. Oh, oh nice. One from Dad and Lester and... Oh, look at this big one from Greg. I recognize the handwriting. Nothing from Charlie? Oh, of course not. That would be sentimental or thoughtful. And no one could ever accuse dear Charlie of that. Gosh, look at the size of this one from Greg. Oh, my, it's elaborate. What's all that yellow stuff? <laughs> That's supposed to be the golden hair of the fair maiden locked in the tower. What? <laughs> yes, listen to the verse. 
To my valentine, I wish you were a damsel, enslaved endurance vile, and I an errant knight upon my steed. I joust with every dragon for the favor of your smile, and release you from your chains with utmost speed. Affectionately, Greg. <laughs> oh, isn't that sweet? Yes, but Kathy, you better start dressing if you don't want to be late. Oh, my gosh, yes. Here, I'll hang up your blouse. Isn't that sweet, though? I wish you were a damsel enslaved in endurance vile, and I an errant knight upon my steed. Save me! Oh, save me, noble knight! Save me, I pray you! Hark! Who calls? Oh, it is I! Up, up in the tower! Held endurance vile. I will save you, fair damsel. I, Sir Gregory the Great, will save you. Oh, I have heard of your gallantry, Sir Gregory. Oh, but beware. There are dragons about. There, guarding the moat. I have no fear of dragons, fair lady. I will slay them all and cross the moat and save you. How thoughtful. How gentlemanly. Hark, someone approaches on the high road. Oh, Oh, it is but Charles the Tinker. I know him well. Ah, oh, yes, Charles the Tinker. I've heard speak of the poor knave. My father has befriended him. He does lowly tests about the castle. Good morning, Catherine. Lady Catherine. Suit yourself. Good morning, Sir Gregory. You know me, Tinker? You are known throughout the kingdom, my lord. Have you come to rescue Catherine? Lady Catherine. As you wish. I have indeed. So I shall waste no time talking to Tinkers. I raise my spear aloft. Your armor squeaks. Go, Sir Gregory, slay the dragon and save me. I have some oil. Silence. I will advance upon the dragon to the right of the moat first, slay him, then dispatch the smaller one on the left. Oh, and rescue me from Durance Vile. Exactly. Oh, how polite. That smaller one may surprise you. What? Huh? He's fast. Ask Catherine. Oh, be quiet. Sir Gregory has come to save me, so take your donkey and pots and pans and get out of here. Do you know what your father thinks of all this? Well, it's none of his business. Save me, Sir Gregory. With pleasure, fair lady. I raise my spear. Don't say I didn't warn you about the smaller one. I fear no dragon. How considerate. You could get her out a lot easier with my ladder. Ladder? It's a collapsible ladder I designed. Put it together in a jiffy. Very practical. It doesn't work. It does so. I've had it up against the tower twice now. You wouldn't come down. Well, a lot of gallantry that took. You want to get out of there, don't you? Not down a ladder. I want to be rescued. I will rescue you, fair Catherine. I, Gregory the Great. How sentimental. I raise my spear. I close my visor. Even if you make it by the dragons, you're going to have a terrible time with those stairs. Oh, will you mind your own business? Stairs? Yes, up to the second floor of the castle. Very long staircase. You'll never get your horse up that. He can get off his horse and walk. I doubt it. Lady Catherine, I never get off my horse. Well, then you can forget those stairs. Oh, all right. I'll come down the stairs and meet you. But... But first, you must slay the dragons. Ah, yes, the dragons. I raise my spear. I close my visor. Spur my charger. And off I go! I wish him luck. Oh, would you mind going away? I thought I'd stick around and watch that second dragon work him over. This has nothing to do with you. Goodbye. Are you sure you don't want to come down the ladder? Very sure. I'll be around again next week in case you change your mind. He would, too, you know. Hold still, dear. This catch is a little loose. Come around with a ladder or something. Don't move. There, I think that'll hold. It would be just like him. Who'd come around with a ladder? Oh, oh nobody. Kathy, you look lovely. Here, let me just loosen your hair a bit. Oh, fooey. What's the matter, child? Oh, Mother, I'm not a child. Now, right there, that's part of it. I'm 23 years old, and I can't get anyone in this house to accept that fact. No, Kathy. To Dad, and until I stop seeing him, Charlie. I'm just somebody running around in pigtails. Well, I'm not. Oh, now, now, don't excite yourself, dear. I'm a lady, and I enjoy being treated like one. That's perfectly natural. And getting flowers and valentines. Hold your head straight, dear. I want to fluff it out at the back of it. And I'm very lucky to know someone who appreciates that like Gregory. Ooh! Oh! Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I hit a snarl. <laughs> That's okay. Wow. Go ahead and open the rest of your valentines. It'll take your mind off this. Okay. Is that the one from Dad? 
Yes. Oh, oh, see, Mom, this is what I mean. To my Valentine. If the world should be your oyster, that's because you are its pearl, and I have the brightest jewel of all in you, my little girl. Only Dad. Why, I think that's a lovely sentiment. His little girl, though. Get the message? That's how he sees me. Just what I was saying. You'd think I was still 12 years old. I'll bet that's how this whole thing looks to him. And Mom, too, probably. A lot of kid stuff. Greg, the rich boy who lives down the block. Me and pigtails. And good old practical Charlie coming by in the summer to deliver the paper. Well, that's not the way it is at all, and I won't let it be. There's your paper, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Charlie. Hi, Kathy. Good afternoon, I'm sure. Hey, what's the matter with your hair? There's nothing the matter with it. Oh. I'm changing the way I wear it. When's it going to be finished? It is finished. Now, Kathy, little girls mustn't shout. Oh, but Daddy's saying terrible things about my hair. Well, it does look a little too grown up, if you ask me. Well, all the other girls are wearing it this way, and Gregory says it's stunning. That's a good description. Who's Gregory? Who's Gregory? Just the best-looking boy who ever moved into the neighborhood, that's all. And he's been riding by here every afternoon on his new bicycle. With the balloon tires? I hadn't noticed. He's going to get killed taking corners the way he does on those balloon tires. Daddy, could you let me look at the society page, please? The society page? Mm, here's the funnies. Say, Kathy. Oh, I thought you'd gone. No, uh, I sold two extra subscriptions this month and won a couple of free passes to the Vista for this afternoon. The Vista Theater? There's a kitty matinee, two hours of cartoons. Thank you, but I've outgrown that kind of social function. Sure to be at least one Donald Duck. Why don't you go ahead, honey? You don't want to sit around here all afternoon. Yeah, there were two last Saturday. Two what? Donald Ducks and one Pluto. Thank you, but just the same. Hello there, Kathy. Oh, Oh, hello. Oh, Daddy, look. It's Gregory going by on his bicycle. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. That's the one balloon tires. Look, Kathy. No hands. Oh, how wonderful, Gregory. I don't give him long riding like that. Oh, you're just jealous because he's so, so entertaining. Yeah, I'll take Donald Duck. Well, then, by all means, don't let me keep you from the kitty matinee. Look, Kathy. I can turn right around, no handed. Oh, oh, Gregory, how thrilling. Watch now. You'll never make it on those balloon tires. See? Wonderful. Oh. Oh. What did I tell you? Oh, Gregory, are you hurt? What happened? Oh, Gregory fell from his bicycle. It figured. I'm okay. Just a little scrape. I'll try it again. I do this all the time. You better be careful there, Sonny. Oh, Daddy, don't call him Sonny. Gregory's almost 14. I take it back, Kathy. He's entertaining, all right. Will you please go away? Watch now, Kathy. No hands. You sure you wouldn't like to go to the Vista? No. Oh. Well, see you around sometime. Kathy, stop patting your hair. You'll mess it all up. Greg said he just left it short like this in a Donald Duck cut. What? Oh, I mean a duck cut, like the movie stars. Hold still. Oh, how in the world I ever expect you to see a class this small? You know, if that had really happened, Greg would have punched Charlie in the nose for being such a wiseacre. There. If what had happened? With the bicycle. As if Greg were just a show-off or something. Oh, I know that's what Dad thinks. Your father thinks Greg is a very nice boy. But he prefers Charlie, and so do you, and so does Lester. Kathy, listen to me. No matter whom anyone prefers, you're the one who's going to go through life with the person you marry. Remember that when you start worrying about other people's opinions. Well, I just wish other people would remember that. Other people are unimportant in a matter of this kind. And just make sure you aren't getting yourself engaged to prove something you don't really believe. <gasps> oh, Oh, there's Gray. I'll go down and let him in. Take it easy. Oh, please, please ask Dad to put his coat on. Now you just sit here and stop worrying about things. I'll say you'll be down in a few minutes. Make a delayed entrance. It never hurts. But Mom, look at your Valentine's or something. Just get your mind off the whole thing for a while and come down when you're ready. Oh, sure. Get your mind off the whole thing, just like that. Read your Valentine's. I wonder what Brother Lester's idea of a valentine is. Well, well, I'm not surprised. A comic one, a nice, friendly little joke. 
Look at that picture, that horrible old hag brewing spells and potions. <laughs> I guess that's supposed to be me. Oh, and a homemade verse. All hail to thee, dear sister mine. Congratulations, Duchess. I pity any valentine that gets into your clutches. <laughs> clown that Lester is. Lester the jester. So that's what he thinks when he calls me Duchess. I'm an old witch, huh? An old witch. It is I, Duchess. Lester the jester. Stop jingling those bells. The next candidate awaits you in the torture chamber. What is his name? A student prince called Gregory, attired in rags of beggary. I hate your verses. They're mean and cruel. What can you expect from the family fool? Enough, I say. Yes, Duchess. Truly, Duchess. Have you informed the candidate? What fate will befall him if he finds me unattractive? Into the chasm of bachelorhood. Exactly. And that ain't good? Silence. Tell me, Jester. Does this potion I have lately brewed and spread upon my face not make me comely? You are right. Ah. It does not. You lie, Jester. A better had you cried, you just, liar. More double meanings? One each for both your faces. Be silent. I am beautiful. My duchess, truth is in you to your fingertips. That's better. Uh, but never, sadly, will escape your lips. Enough. <laughs> One last look in the mirror at my features. <gasps> you lose more mirrors that way. Can it be, Jester, that I am unhandsome? Take heart, my duchess. Greg's a man and then so. What? I mean a man and then so. I can't rhyme everything. He waits? He does. I go. Doorbells invite me. Good luck. My thanks. And don't forget to write me. Oh, I- I'm coming right down, Greg. Kathy! I'm sorry to be late. Kathy, it wasn't Greg who rang the bell, but there's someone to see you. What? It's Charlie. Hello, Kathy. Well, hello, Charlie. Say, you're all dolled up. You look great. Well, thank you. I, I'm going out. Uh, I'll be in the kitchen if you children want anything. Mother. Just call if you need me. Yes, I know your mother told me. Told you what? That you were going out. Oh, yes. Could we sit down for just a minute? Well, of course. Yes, please do. Thanks. I understand you're going out with Greg tonight. Who told you that, Mother? No, as a matter of fact, Lester told me. Well, now, wasn't that nice of Lester? I asked him and he told me. I didn't think it was any big secret. Well, of course it's not any big secret. I'm very proud of it. We're going to the club for a dinner dance. And he sent me these flowers. Your dress looks lovely. What? I say your dress looks lovely. What's wrong with that? I, I just never heard you say anything nice about a dress before. I probably haven't, but on you it looks good. Well... I never heard that either. You just don't listen. Well, I hope you didn't come here to argue. No, but if I have to, I'm prepared. About what? You'll see. Well, well, I should tell you that Greg will be here in a few minutes, so whatever it is. It's Greg. What? I say I'm waiting for Greg. You see, you really don't listen. Now, Charlie. I understand you're expecting a proposal from him. Did Lester tell you that, too? Well, I'd certainly never get it from you. You've been out every time I came around the last few weeks. Two hours before you wanted to go out like a month ago Saturday? Okay, so I'm imperfect. I don't want you to be here when Gregory arrives. You don't know what you want. I want to be treated like a lady. I want little respect and and consideration, not someone coming around with a ladder laughing because Greg falls off a bicycle. What are you raving about now? I know what I'm raving about. You didn't even send me a valentine. Oh, I didn't? No, you didn't. Well, now, we'll see who sent whom what. That's Greg. And I expect you to behave like a gentleman and go out the back door. I never behaved like a gentleman in my life. Let him in. Charlie. Let him in. Oh, if if you make a scene, I'll never forgive you. If you decide what I've made is a scene, I won't ever expect you to. Now let him in. Hi, Kathy. Oh, Oh, good evening, Greg. Do step inside. Oh, thanks. Boy, you look like a movie star. She also looks like Kathy Miller, which ain't bad. Oh, Oh, Greg, this is Charlie Burgess, an old friend. How do you do, Burgess? Pleasure. Charlie just stopped by. He's a dear old friend. Oh, that's very interesting. Well, we'd better get started, Kathy. Here, I'll help you into your wrap. Oh, why, thank you. Yes, I'm not only a dear old friend, but I'm in love with Kathy. Uh, I beg your pardon? Kathy Miller, the one that looks like a movie star. Charlie? And I came by tonight to propose to her. You know what I mean? Marriage? Well, this is most inopportune. We're just going out to dinner. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute, Greg. We're late, isn't it? Were you going to propose to her, mister? Well, now, I... Look, I've known her for a long time, but she's your date tonight, so if you've got anything to say, speak right up. Well, uh, 
Kathy, I'll admit I had thought very seriously of broaching this subject. Charlie, is this your idea of a joke? You call a $250 engagement ring a joke? Look, happy Valentine. Matter of fact, I intended to lay my cards on the table sometime this evening. Well, why don't you do it, mister? What's the offer? Let's see what she's got to choose between. Charlie! Burgess, I regard this as very unsportsmanlike behavior on your part. Have you paid for this ring? I had to put a third down. Well, you're pretty sure of yourself. Sure of myself? I can't even get you on the phone. I know how these down payment transactions work. He can get his money back. Oh, well, that's a comfort. That's reassuring. I'm not worried about getting my money back. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Lester. Goodbye, Lester. That's all she ever says to me. In fact, Burgess, if you like, I'll take that ring off your hand. Now who's sounding sure of himself? Greg, I, I'm not just an item of chattel that's going to the highest bidder. I have something to say about this. All right, but they begin serving dinner at 7 o'clock. If you're hungry, I'll make you a sandwich. Oh, shut up, Lester. Kathy, this is a simple thing. I'm proposing marriage to you. I've got the ring right here. Oh, yes, I know. Like the ladder and the two tickets to the Vista. The what? How about you, Charlie? Charlie, want a sandwich? No, thanks, Lester. Lester, will you go away? Of course, I can't promise anything immediate, Kathy. I still have to finish law school. Will everyone be quiet for a minute? But in three or four years after I get my practice going... Hello there, Greg. Charlie? Good evening, sir. Hi, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Dad, we're having a serious discussion. Well, I'm just looking for the sports section. Kathy, it's getting later every minute. I promised the rights we'd be there by seven. Maybe you'd all like some coffee. Dad, Lester's hanging around to eavesdrop. Make him stop listening. Stop listening, son, and help me find the sports section. Over there on the radiator. Ah! Well, what about it, Kathy? Yes, sir. No. But Charlie. Come on, come on. That's it, buddy. Put the clamps on. Oh, you shut up, Dad. Shut up, son. It's ten minutes to seven. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, what do you say, honey? I, I, I say no. Ah. Uh... Oh, Kathy. Good. Uh, here's your wrap. Oh, no, and I'm not going out with you either. That's final, huh? You won't marry me. You haven't even asked me to marry you. What do you think I've been doing here? Mr. Miller, can I use your phone? Right down the hall, Greg. The rights will never forgive me. I'll tell you what you've been doing. You've been telling everyone here you're going to propose and waving that ring around. But you haven't once consulted me. I told you I loved you. You told Greg you loved me. Craig. I went out to make a phone call. Well, that's who you told you loved me. Well, you heard it. I overheard it. Okay, so get technical. And, and then you remarked to Greg that you came by to propose to me. Well, I did. Came by. Well, that's a nice choice of words, like you were picking up some laundry. Kathy! Oh, I thought you'd left without your corsage here. I'm not going. What? Greg just went to square it with the rights. Oh, so I found the sports section. Listen, Kathy, just tell me now, what do you want? I want you to stop asking questions and say something for a change. Say what? How you feel, what I mean to well, you. Well, you know how I feel. I do not. Would I propose if you didn't mean something to me? I have no idea why you do anything. And I won't until you tell me. Well? Dad, Lester, I think we'd better go. Oh, nobody leaves. Kathy, I... I've been listening for 15 years to my family tell me what a great guy you are. Now they're going to be in on the finish while you do the talking. Well, I... Well... You better come right out and say it, son. We've been plugging for you for a long time. And a girl likes to hear complimentary things. Well, I, I love you, Kathy. I've been in love with you for a long time. And if you feel the same no way... No questions. Keep talking, buddy. Well, I being in love with you, I'd like you to be my wife. You'd like I, it? I mean, I'd love it. It's all I want in the world, and... Yes? Will you marry me, Kathy? Well, you'll have to ask my father. What do you say, Mr. Miller? Fine! I think it would be lovely. Kathy, will you? Oh, yes, Charlie. Yeah. I love you, too. You do? Isn't it nice to have someone come out and say it without having to ask? Well, yeah, it's... Oh, well, my gosh. they were a bit upset, but I explained to the rights. Also, you missed the boat. What? Oh, Greg, Charlie and I are engaged to be married. Great Scott, I said for sure we'd be there by 7.30. Well, Greg, I'm afraid it wouldn't be right under the circumstances. Tell me, Burger. Burgess, uh, do you have a dinner jacket? Well, yes, but it's a little tight. Nonsense. Look, last time I wore it was a I'm sure ball. you'll pass admirably. Pass? I'll introduce him as a dear old friend. Oh, now, Greg. The rights are a very important connection, Captain. It seems like the least we can do. Here, I'll help you into your room. Uh, if you don't mind. Huh? Oh, quite, my error. Mrs. Miller? Mr. Miller? Good night. Good night, Gregory. I had it the first time. Gregory the Great. Be a good boy, Lester. We'll stop by your place, Barrett. Purchase. Purchase. Of course. And I'll help you dress. Kathy, don't forget your corsage. Oh, thanks, Mom. Charlie, are, are you sure you don't mind doing this? Taking you out? Folks, it's almost ten after seven. Charlie, when we get married, can we elope? What? Kathy! Think of the relatives in Peoria. Well, well, at least on our wedding day... Will you come around and put a ladder under my window? A ladder? I'll go out and start the car. Please come quickly. Yes. It's at least ten minutes to the club, even if you catch every light. Kathy, why a ladder? Well, maybe you wouldn't understand it, but 
that I want to do it your way. Do what my way? Come down from the tower. This is Wallace Ford again. There's a neat little phrase which nearly all of us use again and again in our discussions. It's the phrase, a way of life. It refers to how we shape our conduct of life according to our outlook, suiting our actions to what we believe in. Well, that's really what prayer is, a way of life. It's quite the usual thing to regard prayer only as the last recourse, the last hour on our quiver, something to turn to when money or power or guns fail us. Many of us are inclined to think that prayer is rather unmanly, not to be used until all the brave, manly means have been exhausted. But that's not prayer as a way of life. We do more honor to God if we pray every day. When we come to think of it, we can see that we should have more of God's assistance and find ourselves in fewer difficulties if we turn to him beforehand. God hardly expected that we should be left entirely on our own in meeting the problems of our personal life our family life, or even our national life. We ought to use our brains, our judgment, our good sense to the very limit. These are God's gifts to us for our use. Part of praying is thanking him for these gifts. Another part of praying is asking for his help to foresee and forestall difficulties. Prayer is a way of life, and not just a last cry for rescue. It must run through the day. And as each closes, we should all be better off if we gather the family together for prayer as a unit. If every family in the nation did that, the nation would actually be praying together, and the nation would stay together, just as the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you transcribed Bonnie Valentine, starring Barbara Rush. Wallace Ford was your host. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow, Fred Shields, Jeffrey Silver, John Stevenson, and Herb Ellis. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Little Church of the Ambush, starring David Jensen. Eleanor Powell will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.